What's happening? This is John Sue, just slabbering. Today we're joined by two very special guests. We've got friend of the podcast, long time bro, Shane Todd, and we've got Big Paddy McDonald. What's happening? It's good to have you on, boys. Can I throw up a West Side? Go on. Cheers. West Side. You remember Ali G? Mm-hmm. He was the best. He he done that the West, West Side. Side. And then in Manchester. They started to do uh, Throw Your M's Up. Do you know about so, that? No, didn't they actually know. made a song. So your All M's the up. famous rappers in Manchester wrote a song called Throw Your M's Up. It says, if you're rapping money, throw your M's up, M's <laughs> up. So I wrote a Were song. You in it? Nope. I wrote a song called Blow Your Friends Up. Yeah. And I said, you're the type of guy that wants to throw his M's up. I'm the type of guy that wants to blow your fucking friends up. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't like it. Also, shout out to Hollywood. Oh, yes. Hollywood, what's Where's it works oh, for me. Yeah. We huh? used to have a shop yeah, at the bottom of Donegal Road in West, but it was called the West Side Stores. The West Side Stores? And my mate's dad was the, the security guard on it, and he used to call himself the sheriff. <laughs> <laughs> madness. Right, so this episode is sponsored by Hotbox, that was used as studio, sponsored by Buzz Lightyear, the G. Sponsored by DJ K. Who else? <laughs> Wonka. Wonka. And Weedy Wonka, the chocolatier. Sponsors. How are you getting on with your sponsors? You mean like for AA? Oh, yeah. <laughs> for your podcast. Do you, do you, uh, you have sponsors on the Mudblood? Yeah, yeah. Oh, what? Do you? Who are you sponsored by? Manscaped and... Uh... Everyone's Manscaped. Yeah, yeah, see, so I'm not into the manscaped. I don't. I'm, I you don't shave your balls. Dude, fuck! I've never shaved my balls. No, ever. he uses a chainsaw. I don't, I don't. I don't know. I like. I like the ruggedness. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. I, I, God's on a street. But not in summer though. Even in the summer. Look, it's summer now. It's sweltering, but I've got a big. There's big Wonka in the door. We need to throw some of them Wonka bars on the table. I might ask my sexy assistant here to put some. Uh, so, oh, well, just call me Paddy. <laughs> <laughs> um, so when um, I started this show like I said I've been struggling with the sponsors you know I wasn't sure who to get on I've had loads of sponsors none of them seemed to stick you with me yeah I wanted Dale Farms to sponsor me mm-hmm. what I what I wanted to ask was how do you um, how do you like why do you get Manscaped and everything? They're not, a, they're not a, like a Northern Irish company. No, they're American, but they so, just do all comedy podcasts. But here's what I said to him last time. You could get sponsored by anybody. All you have to do is show up and go, you're sponsoring my podcast. Yes. Any brand in the world will go, okay, mate. If you show, I mean, if you show up in headquarters. Yeah, no, well, uh, like, uh, I've thought about it, but I want Northern Ireland brand. He's going to fucking storm to- tail farm. Now. No. <laughs> I want tail farm. you see him in the tally, it's fucking, like, with a cow in headlock. Showcase is all over him, fucking, <laughs> what the fuck, I was only looking at a sponsor. <laughs> so I don't, I don't really drink sugary drinks. Mm-hmm. I drink water, whiskey, and coffee. They're my three drinks. But yesterday it was roasting. I've got a water here, bro, thank you. Um... But yesterday it was roasting, I was at the captain's table and I thought I'm going to have a Zuki and it's by Dale Farms and it says produced in Northern Ireland. Mm-hmm. It's nicer than a Ribena, like, mm. like oh, delicious. Wow. Oh, a Zuki is your What's the captain's right table? Down. Do you not know about the captain's table? Right, I have to give a shout out to this. And also it's a link to Blue Lights for these here this. So captain's table is the best chippy restaurant in the whole of Ireland. Right. It's in Glen Gormley. Right. It's special. Like, I'm what not, sets it apart? I'm going to tell you just the God's honest truth. I sometimes lay in bed. My girlfriend will vouch for this. I do sometimes dream about it, think about it at night. <laughs> as, uh, I turn around and say, should we do a captain's table tomorrow? I do. Because it does sound like a sex position when you <laughs> sit in bed. <laughs> the captain's table. We'll do a captain's table. <laughs> <laughs> They're chicken. I get, I get the same thing. We went in yesterday and my girlfriend says, I might get something different. And I looked at her and said, something different? And then she looked at the menu for two minutes and I was just staring at her and then she went, okay, then we'll just get the same with me. Because yeah. I actually said, should I go up and pay for mine? You know, and wait uh, for you. Yeah. And she was like, what? She was offended. So she said, just get the same. We get southern fried chicken pieces and chips. 
with like a garlic mayonnaise dip. Yeah. But you see, the, you get four big bits of chicken, uh -huh. and like there's no bone or griddle in them. They're Great. just big. They just you eat the whole thing, and it is stunning. And see, by the second one, you're full. Right. But they're so nice. You have to eat all four of them. I know. Right. Right. My girl can't eat all four of them, so I usually eat like one, maybe two of hers too. So uh -huh. I'm eating six bits of chicken. Wouldn't think I'd love it. I'd eat it. Oh, but, I'd tell <laughs> you, but it's special. But everybody here this. So I go to Captain's table now constantly. It's my favourite. How often? Only about three, four times a week. You know, maybe. Uh -huh. yeah, isn't it, Caitlin, would you say? Once a week. Once a week, she's right. saying. Well, twice. Well, went twice last week. Well, anyway, I was there anyway. And next thing, your boy from Blue Lights messaged me. Right. What's his name? Braneth or something? That's the student cop. The student yes. cop? Yes. Yeah. The student yeah. cop? Yeah. He messaged me and says, I've seen you eating in Captain's Table a few times. That's my family's. They own it. They own it. Oh wow! He says I work in there in between acting. Why don't you get them as the sponsor? Yeah, I might do. Actually, that's an entrepreneurial mind. But do what? You know what I mean? But hi, though, because what are we going to do? Just, have fish well, and chips. You don't so always need no, to show the you thing. You don't need to show the thing, even if it's just a a, a thing, a picture of a them graphic. Or something like that. Yeah. Get a graphic. Uh, it just has to be a menu sitting there. Do you know what I mean? And just and you're mentioning it anyway. That we have some sponsors and they don't want product. They just want you to say, yeah. like for a minute, just say. Go to blah 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 mm -hmm. or get a bit of it. Yeah, like know? we have manscape stuff in the background, but they they don't ask for that. No. Yeah. We just do it. See the do reason I, I loved it when you were sponsored by Panjana. That's yeah, the reason yeah, yeah. why we even getting yep. got in contact. You said that Panjana should do a John Sue song or something. Yeah, yeah. But um that's what I loved. I love the Northern Ireland brands because mm -hmm. I'm gonna tell you this now. See me, I've I've lived all over the place. But see being back home. Like, I love it, bro. Yeah. I actually love it. Because it comes table. Yeah, I'm talking about the barista bar coffees. Because you feel like you're at home, that's what it is. Yeah, but not know. only that, the thing I love about it here is, like, they all say, like, fuck all them international companies, we'll make our own shit. Do you know what I mean? So you've got the barista bar, you've got Mods, you know, Mods ice cream, like you mm -hmm. see in England. There's no, like, like ice cream. The, the ice cream culture in England is completely different. Ben and Jerry's, I would sewn up. Yeah, Hagen Das. But hold on, but you think Ben and Jerry's and Hagen Das are better than mods? No. And even if it did, I I'd say no. Say exactly. Because <laughs> of the way you looked at me. Yeah. <laughs> my, mate, my mate owns the mods in the Lisbon Road. Does he? Mm -hmm. So do you think he would sponsor me? Just go and ask him. Because I, I do want mods sponsor. Definitely. I do want mods. Or the Rinka. Have you ever been to the Rinka? No. no. You just don't know about the Rinka? No. Are you joking me? No. no. Where is it? Island McGee? That's why. That's why I haven't heard of it. I know. Aye, oh, but it's very famous. So the rink it was is like a hundred years old. This building it used to be a dance hall. Right. In like the twenties and the thirties, and all the all the um all the people used to go up and dance and all that. It's like a big white and red building. Right. right. And now then they started making their own ice cream. I I've actually never been in Adam McGee. I've never been in Adam McGee. Are you just joking, mate? No. And have you been to Browns Bay? No. No. You just haven't been to Browns Bay. No. no. Where are you from, sorry. West jo Belfast. We're sorry. And you've never been down to Adam McGee? Nah, we, we they, come to, they come to Hollywood. We would have went to Hollywood Hellsbury. and Banger and that was it. Fucking joke. And I you'd never go round to that side of never the thought, Never thought. I'm, I'm going to be real. We would have went across country and went to Carn Lock, but we would never have went down through Lawn. Yes, Carn Lock. I went to Carn Lock. It was a nice chip there. But um, I'm going <laughs> to... <laughs> Are you saying all this because I'm on? Is that what it is? Because Shane was just on. You, you're looking at me going, it's a nice tip of your Like, there's a nice tip of your eye. Fucking, he did it all the time. Oh, no, no, no. In Carnlock? Yeah, no, yes. it is. The I galley? Know. Yes. That's, yeah. Is that the one? Facing the harbour. Yeah. Yeah. There's a galley in Annalong. Unbelievable. I, at the first time I'd been in Annalong was last week. Did you go to that? Chippy, no? No, I just went down along. I just, I'd never drove out the other side of Newcastle. I don't know why. I'm just driving out the other side of Newcastle. Do you know what's weird about Annalong, right? They speak like with a, they'll maybe hate me for saying this. It's like a Balamina accent. So you go to Balamina, drive through Belfast, obviously the accent changes to a Belfast accent. On your way up to Newcastle, it becomes more neutral. And then you go way, way, way on past Newcastle. And it's this, Bal it's nowhere near Balamina, but it's near enough exactly the Balamina accent. Yeah. And then you've places like, you know, Clock, Art Glass. Where so many people from West Belfast left. Get fucked out. So you <laughs> the Belfast accent, yeah, yeah and then no, you drive all the way yeah. there, all Doing the accents in between, the same, yeah. and then you have the Belfast accent again. But I found that alone, Kilkeel, that, that's mental the way they have the Balmain accent. Yeah, that is. I don't know what the reason for it is. Like. I don't know. I seen a sad thing there on the Facebook yesterday about all the railways from the 1920s mm -hmm. in Ireland, and have you seen the railway network? 
It was like vast. Yeah, every yeah. Part of and it. they let it fucking And they've go. shown it now, and it's literally like a skeleton of it. It's yeah. literally like shit. Here, man. I only found out that, um, you know, on your way to International Airport, there's the tr- you drive across the tracks. Every time I do that, I take a breath and go, oh, this is it. And I always brace myself, and I go, thank, I always get lucky with this light. There's never a light. There's no train that goes that no way, train, is there? No. Ah, I'll find out. Stamped out. Yeah. But what I years, do is years see, ago. see when you're going across that, like Jordanstown, there's the... the, the well, we're there today. The we're train tracks. Today. And I, I always, like, even if we're working yeah. there, if it's my kids, people that work for me, they'll go across the tracks and they go, oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah. <laughs> and they were like, you done it three times. Yeah. It's like, fucking stop. <laughs> like, it's not funny. Well, that's exactly what happened to us tonight. We, um, we get up to Jordanstown and there was a huge queue. So my girl says, turn, and we'll go up the back road instead. She drives up the back road and we hit the railway. Yep. And the Fuck railway sake. thinks, and I'm looking at her then, and she's shouting at me, saying, ah, oh, don't be blaming me. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I said, ah, oh, we should have just stopped. But uh, you have to sit there and wait, you know. But I like the trains too. I do like the trains. No, it's trains are train trip's good. Uh, but the reason why it was obviously is because it was early morning. That's what I wanted to talk to you about. So first time you asked me to do your podcast... I know it was a comedy. I've seen it. No, it was a comedy podcast. And he said he wanted me on. I says, lovely. Now, what time? And he says, 10 a.m. And I was thinking, who the fuck is, like, funny at 10 a.m. in the morning? You love me? So I was like, fuck. So I, like, woke up at, like, 7. You know, had a cup, two cups of coffee. You were prepping? Two spoofs, everything. You with me? Like, ready for it. A cotton stable. Exactly, you know, <laughs> <laughs> nearly had a captain's table. But then, so I've done that twice. Then your, your woman, Diona, yeah. Dr. Day, she yeah. asked me to go on hers. Uh-huh. And what did she say to me? 10 a.m. Yep. And I was thinking, this is Shane. Like, Shane's behind us. Uh, so, you said to me. <laughs> yeah, I thought, I thought there's no I way. I thought like Shane's getting me up early every morning. It's a, cons- it's a conspiracy. Know? I'm making all podcasts start early. And then what happened? I slept in for her podcast. She fell out. She's never asked me back on. Mm-hmm. She just says, I'll get you on some other time. Oh. I, I just like getting my business done early in the day. I like that. Early in the day, get out, and then your time's your own. Yeah. See, when I was younger, see, when you got homework after school, I did it straight away. People go, what are you doing? See, as soon as it's done, my time's my own. Did you now, do that, Polly? Foxy guy didn't even go to school. Neither. <laughs> 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 Imagine you get homework I, I no got the teacher to do my homework. <laughs> <laughs> my dad goes, Mom, I'll take you somewhere. And I say, hey, I'll do this first, Dennis. And then my time's my own. Yeah. Get Legend. it done. Legend. Rest of the day's free. No, I like that. Get I it respect done. that. I do respect I that. I can't work at night. Apart from all, obviously stand-up. But the idea of sitting and writing or editing or doing... I Past the 8 o'clock, I can't... I can't do any of it. I noticed that you do, you're an early bird, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You definitely are an early riser. I was an early, I I used to work at a bakery, not in the bakery. I would go and collect all the, the freshly baked cakes and breads, put them into my van in the morning, and then drive to a different market every you were day. You a bread man. And I was a bread man in the markets. There's a song about that. No? Yeah, I'm the, I was the best bread man too. The guy at the bakery <laughs> says to me, if you can earn £200 a day in the markets, You've, uh, I've got enough, like you know, yeah, to can. like you know to keep your job. And I was like the second high, highest paid in the bakery. So I was like, this is great. I was bringing in over six hundred a time. For well, sure, day. just looking at people take a fucking no, loaf. <laughs> the opposite. Eat the creamy dom, you can't eat. The opposite. The opposite. It was all the wee grannies. Oh, and they loved it. And you know why I'd have done it too? The cakes were special, so I'd cut the cakes up. And the, the like, was there a bit of stuff Excuse in them? me, love. Yeah, exactly. Whatever there was. There <laughs> we grannies like that cake's great. There was. There was some type of GMO or something. I don't know, but it was like it hooked them anyway. They were coming by four or five at a time. It was. What do you call that stuff? It's in a lot of Chinese sauces. MSG. 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 I asked for extra MSG. Do you? For, yeah, double it up. That's the stuff makes you wake up in the middle of the night. Nah, yeah. tongues oh, no. I have put on loads of weight being back home like that. Oh, is the ser- serious, serious problem. Because I love all the food here, you know, oh, the oh, sweet breads and everything. Yep, yep. It's not good. In but fact. you're feeling comfort too. I think that's what happens too. It is. When I lived in America, I didn't eat as much. And it must have been because I was homesick, do you know what I mean? Yeah, you hit the nail on the head. See, it's weird because this wasn't ever really like, you have to remember, I've, I am a traveller by mm-hmm. heart. Like, I've moved all around, you know, and like lived everywhere. And like I said, I moved away from here and I was a wee kid. And then, you know, like coming back as well. So, but see, like living in Spain, so I suppose it was quite like a high stress lifestyle as well, do you know what I mean? And coming back then, you just get the. Comfort. Yeah, and I'm just sad eating the sodas. I'm the opposite. I eat bad when I travel. Mm. I eat more on the road. I eat shit food. Yeah. And then when I come home, I just want, I crave like nice food. 
But when I'm if I'm touring, I I should. Yeah, see, see in Spain, all the restaurants and shit, they're like tourist traps. So uh, they're yeah, actually yeah. shit. Yeah, and yeah, they know they're shit, and yeah. they don't give a fuck because they know that you're you're only gonna eat there once and go somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. So I would only ever really eat in Spain when I'm starving. Yeah. And then most of the time, I just drink loads of water. It's roasting, uh, and I was losing loads of weight. And then coming back over here, it's a wee bit colder. And, there's loads of staunch food. When we were working on the sites, it was cold in the morning, so you, you yeah. opened your fucking sandwiches and there's fucking cold bread in the middle of December. You went, fuck sake, run down there and grab a couple of sassy rolls or a fucking yeah. and a soup and dip it in. It, you know but then I mean? you're, work, you're working that off as well, yeah. no? You think you are too, like, but I could never really fucking eat anything, do you know what I mean? Did you used to work on the building sites? Oh, uh, yeah. So did I. Fucking what were you on the building sites? I'm a joiner by trade. A joiner? Oh, uh, so. Yeah. I'm a labourer by trade. Labrador, we call yeah. them. <laughs> yeah. The mad thing about it is, labourers now get fucking serious money. What? Yeah. Like, labourers are getting 100, 120 quid a day now. Do you know what I mean? They're as close as fucking I'll Never joiners. forget, I was um, I was working as a labourer, I was like 16, up in Bangor. Mm-hmm. And um, there was, they said, they put you with this other labourer. He was about 45, you know. He sort of said, I've been a labourer since I was 16. And I was like, wow. And we sat down and drink, you know, um, having our lunch. And he pulled out a, 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 you know, a jar of whiskey. Started drinking the whiskey. His lunch break was about 12 in the day. I said, my goodness. He goes, I drink a bottle of that a day, like, you know. I was like, my goodness. And then, um, and then he says to me, uh, my dad was a labourer his whole life. He used to work with my dad. He's dead now. And I says, Tara, what did he die of? And he said, alcoholic poisoning. And I was like, whoa. And there he is, a labourer his whole around. life, drinking every day too. And I was like thinking, fuck me, you know? Yeah, yeah. Labouring was mad. I remember he, they used to say to me, go and clear out a house, you know, that was all, they just like finished doing it. You'd have to rip up the floorboards and I would just go in and find a wee spot in between the rubble, fall asleep for two hours. <laughs> and that, that's, that's the truth. Because <laughs> it's in mornings, you know? Mornings yeah. are dangerous times. Mornings are very dangerous. That's when most people die. Most people take heart attacks. In the morning? In the mornings, you know. That's why you don't want to get up. That's, that's why, why, that's why I'm up early. I'm trying to fight it off. You're fighting yeah. it off. See, I like to just sleep through it. And then mm. Say you were joining on the side, and they were like, oh, there's a new labourer joining today. And I show up, do you go, ah, oh, fuck. Yeah, you lost yeah. about an hour. I know. Uh, I get the torch them, go and get the sky. No, the second from. they go, can you lift that? I go, no, we, we'll have to get we, someone else. We we had a fella come in, and, <laughs> and that's what it was. It was fire doors. Like, fire doors are really heavy. But we were like, take him from that floor down to that floor. Yeah. And he was fucking trailing it down the stairs. Like, he, he couldn't lift it. And I was like, you have to fucking go. Like, if you can't lift I mean, the fucking door, that's what you're here yeah, to yeah. do. Fuck. I, do yeah. I would try, like, but I would just, I'm not practical like that. Yeah. See, like, DIY and Awkward. things like that. Yeah. Yeah. No. I gave it a go, but I, I couldn't do it. Yeah, I could do it. I'm all right with it. Like, I'm all right. I'm not too bad. One summer, my dad was doing some of the garden, and it was just digging a certain part of the garden, putting in a wheelbarrow, dumping at the end of the field. So I one day he was out for the day, and I went, you know what I'm going to do? My dad's old. I'm going to do it for him. So cancel whatever I was doing that day, got in the garden, roasting hot day, dug all day, wheelbarrow, field, wheelbarrow, field, didn't even take a break. My dad got home, and I went, what do you think? He's like... Just, that's not the part of the garden we need to dig up. So we need to, to get it all back. So I went, I went out or some of my mates and he had to go and get all the <laughs> all the earth back into a wheelbarrow. And bring it take back. Take it oh. back, relay it and then go and do the thing he did. He's like, Can you give me a hand? I was like, I can't go and play football. Fuck that. Yeah. So that's why I couldn't be honest. Like I'm I'm no good at that. Like yeah, I'm no good. What, what what jobs have you done when you were young? Dishwasher. You were I was a dishwasher. I always did like first job. I always did like wee bits and pieces. So when I was a kid, if it was like during the summer or something, was some, a tenner a day to pick up for compost, you know, shit in a garden like leaves or whatever, whatever it was, I'd do something. And then when I was fifteen, started working as a dishwasher. Um, and I loved it. Like it was great. Crack. Kitchens, brilliant crack. Mm-hmm. When you were a kid, it was in a brilliant restaurant? crack. Yeah, and it was just you're always working with someone kind of your own age, so it was brilliant. And then they bought you a drink. There's a bar there as well, so you had a drink with everyone after, and you're like 15, 16 with a pint. I loved it. And then I kept doing that. I think when I started doing stand up, I was I still was dishwasher, and then when I went full time. Years later, was stand up. Dishwasher? No, 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 no. Oh. 
full time when I went full time with stand up. Oh right, yeah. I and I hadn't washed dishes in years. Then there was a point where I was like, I'm gonna have to go back to do both. So I rang up to get my old job back. I was I was in like my early twenties. I w- you'd have sit like I'd have been on TV doing things, but I just I wasn't earning enough money. So I rang back from my old job. They wouldn't give me it. She's like, we'll see, we'll see. And then something came in that week, a wee job, whatever it was, and I kind of snowballed. So I didn't have to, but there was a point where I was very close to going back to it. Like. Is that the only job you've done? No, no, no. No, worked in a magazine, worked worked in a few shops, like a centre, a mace, bar. I was so brutal. Because my miles is so bad, and I wouldn't look. It'd be like, it'll tell you what change to give people. I was like, nah, I freestyle. <laughs> Everyone I know was like, you gave me like 27 quid, but I only bought a pint of milk. I gave you a thirty pound note. You gave me like fifty. Qu- I was like, I don't know. I I did I did all sorts. I was gonna work in Hollister. Like did you work in Hollister? This mm-hmm. was true. Front of house. No. The stalker. Which? <laughs> no. Overnight. Overnight. Do, do, do you know Hollister is like the American surf shop? Yeah. And they came to Belfast and the ha- So front of house were called models. So yeah. I pl- I applied for a job. Just clothes shop. I was like, I need a job. I was in my early twenties. And a few people were like, you should go for it. I'm, I'm loving it. I was like, I'll be at the front of the shop, shirt off, whatever. Apply for the job. You've de- it's basically, you get your photo taken and then the job interview. It was like, that's, that's weird, isn't it? Get the photo taken. A few weeks went by, nothing. I knew a few other people who had gone for it and had been told they'd got it or hadn't got it and hadn't phoned me. And about a month later, they rang me and went, listen, we'd love to get you in. I go in thinking I'm going to be like a model for Hollister. Like, imagine that, like standing at the front of the shop. And all you do in that job is go... What's up, dude? Welcome to the pier. Don't have to, you don't do anything else. You just welcome people to the shop. So they've got models for the front of the house. Then they have uh, behind the tills, which is like the second class of good-looking yeah. people. Then you have people who stack the shelves when they well, like re- rearrange your clothes. Then you've got stock room, and they kind of come in and out, but they're like, you know, like fifth grade down. They're still good-looking, but like they're mainly in the back and they come out the odd time. Then there's overnight, which is when they close the shop. They bring you in. Yeah, <laughs> They're like, there's no customer. Time. The public are away. Yeah, Get you in. Me. And you and all these, like, other freaks <laughs> come out from the woodwork. <laughs> the the we knew you should have been down in a hostel stuff model. and stood at the front door. There's yeah. people coming in instead of going, See, welcome to period. What's well, happening? I'm yeah. allergic to clothes shops. I'm allergic to them. I'll tell you, I cannot. See, Primark and all. Yeah. Start twitching and itching. I have to get out. I cannot cope. Hollister should have had you at the front. Yeah. What's up, dude? Welcome to the period. And you're like, buy a fucking hoodie. Yes, man. Well, listen, let me tell you this. I was thinking... If music and all doesn't end up, you know, I was looking at something. I was looking at a job, trying to get me a wee job here, and I thought I found the perfect job for myself. This is before God. He says, like, I know a couple of my mates are all taxi men. Mm-hmm. So a few weeks ago, I started looking into the taxi, and he says, this would be brilliant. You're self-employed. You can turn your, you turn your um, flicker on whenever you want. You're with me, and I was thinking, this is my job. Like, I would love that, because I drive about anyway. So I was thinking, look, to the night after the podcast, I could just walk out, flick my thing on, start collecting a few folks. But then I realised there's a few reasons why I couldn't do One, your camera's always on. I've seen that, your man. And then two, I thought they always have to wear a uniform. And I can't mm-hmm. wear shirt and ties. Even in school and all, I just never wore a, a uniform. I hate shirts and ties, you know? So, And then I've seen your man. Remember your wee man? I felt terrible for him. What did you think of the taxi man who went viral? Well, he I, used to be a taxi driver. Did you be a taxi man? Uh, and did you wear a suit and tie? No. Here, why, 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 why not the Uber? Why not? Do, you, you can do different means of it, like. As a black taxi man. No, what do you mean? Were you identified as a black man in no. a taxi? What no. do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> I drove about with a Jamaican accent, you know what I mean? Yeah. People get in there yeah. like, it's like, where are you going, my friend? <laughs> <laughs> no, I drove a black taxi. Ah, uh, black taxi. As soon as Paddy flicks the oh. lights on. Yeah, Paddy's like, hey, he's I'm a black white. taxi man. I was thinking he was going, what He's with Ian Danny Murphy, though. <laughs> <laughs> so you were a black taxi man? Yeah, yeah. So when I got my finger bit off and I lost I lost a built in firm and all, and oh, I did the depression, I, I fucking... Her stepdad was a black taxi man and says, look, get he your license. <laughs> yeah, I got it. <laughs> I thought it was her stepdad for a reason, you know. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> right. So this white black taxi man. So he had a black taxi. So yeah. he says, look, you can go out at night in it. 
and we'll share it. And I was like, right, so he worked the days and I worked the night time. And right, well, but... Uh, so I was working on the falls because it was like bus, it was like buses. You and know did you I mean? do your taxi... Done the licence license. and all that. Was it easy enough? Back then you just applied for it. Do you know what See, I mean? See, I looked at it, you have to do with another theory. My mate, does, my mate does the course. Yeah. So he does. I felt bad on your wee taxi man. You know the one who went viral? I think he fucking... See to me, this is what I said, and I said it in our podcast. He seemed to me, you no, know, like a taxi man, because I work with loads of them, yes. and they're all like, I fucking sort that out for you, don't you worry about That's it. That's what I said. And I, I said. says, I reckon he's been at a family barbecue or something, and somebody in his family's fucking knocking gear out, and he's went, what, who's fucking you about? I'd fucking sort it out. Ring him and tell him to get in the taxi. I genuinely think that's what do you think? It. Do you think he's just left the camera on by accident? I don't know. I don't it? know what... Because that is the weirdest part, isn't it? Mm-hmm. You know, that the, the, the camera's on. But I guess it's what I say. The people, like, see, some, see him threatening me like I back yeah. on. I'd have put his fucking car through. So, fucking so did my brother. Said, my brother no said that too. Uh, especially... It's a big air pistol. Like I got, there's not many desert eagles oh, about the calf. Yeah. Exactly. Do you know the, the, di- of it? Do you know the difference in me? But, but, but I, I don't get thing. that. Like, see when you watch films and the, and or a mafia movie or a fucking anything, and they go yeah. get out of the car and walk into yeah. the fucking forest and yes. dig your own hole. Yeah. See if I'm and see if somebody took me to Tully Carnet fucking forest and went get out and dig your own hole. I go fuck off. Shoot me in the fucking car. You can wash your car. You can't do yeah. that. Here's I'm the difference. Digging my own hole. Do yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. Here's but the difference in me and Paddy. People usually do it like the come on, we're gonna go and dig someone else's hole and then they're gonna. No, I but that's different. You don't know yeah, nothing exactly. about it. But yeah. see if some cunt's going like I want you to yeah. dig your own hole. I'm like, the, oh, you're right. The, the difference. Right. The difference in me and Paddy is see if a taxi man would go and went dig your own hole. I'd say no worries, mate. How deep do you want? Yeah. Why? Yeah. Because then you're getting shot your hole. I know. So why? So you know that like, anyway. go, I'm not too sure about this part of the forest. Is there another nicer part? Um, I just, don't. Yeah. It's I, just I'm not really liking this well, spot. Why though. Be in because your own, in your own demise. I'll tell you why. Because see about now into digging a hole, he go. He's melting my fucking he's, head. He's he go. Content. You're all right, mate. He go. You're all right. I know you just shoot you. Yeah. And leave nah, he wouldn't. Even, he wouldn't. Even, he'd feel bad. He go. You're all right, mate. You're all right. Yeah. I no. was always like, see when he's. I go. Yeah, so he's the guy pointing the gun while he's driving. If I was in the passenger seat, all I, I would do, all I would up. do is keep my eyes on him. You see, the minute he looks away at me to look at the road, the gun's getting grabbed, took uh, off him. But you know what I mean. See if you go, go up if you, uh, hole, you got gun up in the air, elbow, elbow here. Yes. Baba. And then after that, after that, yeah, I've got nothing. But people, people you know, say, the fuck you doing? Yeah. People say to Sorry. me that uh, elbows are the best way. You know, for. No, t- if you grab the head and then go into <laughs> that, that's how you get it. Grab the back of her head so they can't move, and then just. Yeah. Just sit them down. That's yeah. how Bam Bam knocked out Derek Lewis. Didn't even look that great. He just got in just up up close to oh. Big Elbow. Yeah. Punish him. Poking so, the head. there. Did you do any yes. MMA, Shane? Huh? You seemed like you done. <laughs> <laughs> you seemed good with that elbow. I've done this MDMA. I haven't done no, MMA. No, no, no. <laughs> I haven't done either. No. I do MDMA quicker than I do MMA. Now you've done the boxing. You're undefeated in boxing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You've actually got a well, better both record than McGregor. Which is both undefeated. McGregor? Huh? You have actually got a better boxing record. I saw a, some TikTok of him walking out of a club last night, or walking into somewhere, and that's the only time I've looked at him. I thought it'd be it'd be close enough. You know what I mean? He was under pressure. <laughs> you know when he's you know when he's just he's doing that. It was a video from far away, but you could hear him breathing. And I thought, I wonder, could you just like leave him a wee minute and then push him, run away? Would he just fall? Everybody has their day. Uh, Everybody yeah, yeah. has their day. No matter who you are. That that fall down is unreal from from him. But would I, I, no. I, I would never I, do that. I, I still think... I still He's think never going to fight again. Yes, he is. He's fighting Chandler. Have He's you seen him? Michael From Chandler. France? Uh, yes. Yeah. From France. Fuck's sake, he couldn't, <laughs> sake, he couldn't beat Gunther. He's fighting Chandler <laughs> from France. <laughs> I... I, I there, right, yeah, he's supposed to, right? Yeah. But if you've seen him... He does look different. He looks like... Yeah. He looks very bloated. He looks like two McGregors. He looks yeah. like McGregor at McGregor. Like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I we did the boxing, brilliant, but I don't think did I'd ever do it again. Did you box too? Yeah, why? Did you, Paddy? I, I was upset. I was going to go shoot. I headlined it. Shane I don't think I'd ever do it again. was going to get me to walk him out and then yeah. changed his mind last month. Uh, it was... Uh, insurance purposes? Insurance purposes, but out of the ring. It's, I sound like a professional boxer. Out of the ring, there was a lot of stuff going on. So I didn't I didn't sort of have the things I wanted to, but um, it was brilliant. Special, though. It was so good. Did you win your fight too, Paddy? Draw. Draw? But I definitely won't let it. Big rolling point. Wow, and it was a good, but you just scrapped it out there. See, to be honest, do you know a heavyweight fight 
Yeah. Do you know why they get tired? Of course. Well, that's the way it was. Yes, and you were just two big tired yeah, boys there. Exactly. That's exactly what it yes, was, you know, and people were like, fuck's yeah. sake. But he's 46 and I'm 43. Of like, course. We've for had our fucking day, you know. For, and how many rounds? Three. Three, three, three minutes. Minute. Minute. It was too minute quick. Half. It was too quick. Yeah. It went by just like Did that. Did you love it, Shane? I loved it. And you retired undefeated then? Yeah. I want to fight Mickey Bartlett. Yeah, it's the next. I mean, I the, do you know what the class thing about it is? Seasons were stopped. You saw the matches that it should have been. Everything was a mismatch because yeah. we made it all... When everyone agreed to do it before we'd done any training, any sparring, all the fights were made. So once you started sparring and training, you realised, actually, this person should be fighting that person. This person should be fighting that person. I love the buzz of it and the sport element of it, but I didn't like punching somebody. The main thing for me, my dad was a boxer and a good one. Yes. I wasn't any good at boxing. Yeah. So I left boxing because it just, it was always top heavy with my shoulders. The more I trained, the bigger that got. But I was always fighting fucking taller people that were skinny and it's bit the content, do you know what I mean? So I fucking hated it. But my dad, when I was nine, we were sitting in the Ulster Hall, he used to take me every year to the Ulsters. And he says, I'd love you to fight here one day. And I got him to walk me out. And you I have his not, foot, you wanna see his face like see, he was in his corner, he was in your corner. My dad was just nah, like, he was I just, no, he was chewing chewing gum and he didn't have chewing gum, do you know what I mean? No, and you know like, fucking proud. Like, like, you'd have to sort of say, is that God even? Because, like, what's the chances of you doing that? Mm. Like, you're not a boxer. No, no. You know what I mean? No, no. And your dad said to you back in the day, back I'd love you to fight And you. I just always And remembered. next thing you ended up fighting it in a sold out crowd. In, in the Ulster Hall, like, it was in just, the hall that he it was wanted fucking unreal. Like. It's similar, it's not the same, but my dad then, he was in the Crumlin Road mm-hmm. Jail. And then I made the album, The Troubles. Mm-hmm. And in my album, uh, I've got a song and all dedicated to my dad's life story and everything. And I talk about, you know, his whole his whole journey. And um, I released my album launch then. I, I rented out the Crumlin Road Jail. Brilliant. And Plus. I got my dad to host it. And my dad Very hosted the night. It's, and it's funny enough, it's 10 years ago, next year. Close. And um, I said to my dad, well, I'm going to hire it out again next year and we'll do a 10 year anniversary. But this time I'm going to do a live podcast in it too, mm-hmm. with a live audience. And I'm going to I'm going to interview my dad, an ex IRA prisoner, mm-hmm. and the ex prison. So my dad? Was your dad there? But go on, get You can come on the podcast too. You're more than welcome. I want you both to, I'm going to book it in advance, and it's going to be a sit down audience. Do you, can I suggest some? You have this. See if you, 10 years since that album, See if you just did that album start to finish. Yeah. With the crowd. It'd be unbelievable. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. That's what I'm doing. That's what I'd done as well ten years ago. But it was more of a stand up and they were all drinking. I threw some photos, there's a guy spilling his drinking on chair and as I'm rapping, but it's not that type of Was album. it in the chapel in I think it was, yeah. yeah. In the big massive the big room like yes. did it have a gallery up at top? Yes. That was the chapel. Yeah. That's where it was. It was um, my dad though said it freaked him out. Cause, being back yeah being back and then hearing me stood there rapping the story of him being yeah, in there yeah. mm. and um, funny enough as well the old prison chaplain he's a guy called David Jardine and um, I said to him at the start of the night it was packed like and it was like a big gig night and I says to him just stay for the third song about my dad you'll appreciate that and then afterwards go because it's going to go on late yeah so I'd done the whole album then, finished my whole album, walked off, everyone was chatting, you know, turned around, and there's the prison chaplain, still there, gone midnight, and he was wearing his collar and all, and he was like, ah, best night of my life, Johnny, I loved it. Brilliant. It was amazing, I was like, why, you know? But it was still, I could have done it better, but it was the launch, I didn't but know. But you know, it's your first yeah, time. Yeah. Yeah, so this time, I'm going to do it proper. Like I said, I'm going to do a, a live podcast um, for an hour or so, interview my dad and I'll be back in the jail again. Brilliant. And um, the ex IRA man, the ex prison chaplain. Yeah. And then after that, I've got like my mates, Gypsy's Wish. Have you ever heard of them? They're an amazing band, but phenomenal. And they sing all like, you know, Gaelic, so all this mm-hmm. type of stuff, get them to play that, and then I'll do the whole album. It's see, a full night. See, that's yeah. cool that you can do that. Like, my dad was a motorbike racer, so I can't, I'm not competing at the Northwest 200. You know what yeah. I mean? So, like, <laughs> I can't say to him, I did this thing. Sure, sure. Like, sure. Paddy wasn't a boxer, just... but he's still done his oh, dad proud. That's what I mean. You better get what on What do you want moment. me to do? I, I enter the LMN TT? <laughs> yeah, I'll on, die. I will literally get die. On back. <laughs> yeah. I don't I'll do the wee sidecar. Motorbikes are dangerous. See, in Gordon and all, where I come, like in Manchester, it's probably the number one cause of deaths for young Scrambles. boys. 
Boy, I, I know lads who've been decapitated, literally driving their motorbike down a, a, a lane and they came into a bollard, boom, took their head clean off. Loads of young lads. See, to be in a sidecar, you, you don't have to be... Do you have to, uh, there's no skill in the passenger of a sidecar, is there? Thank you. Yeah, I'm moving your weight. Yeah, oh, well, I mean, I can... Like Bob's <laughs> yeah. Here, I, no, I've completed but I would say there's a skill to it. Like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would love the wee sidecar. Like, I always wanted the wee, the wee sidecar, you know, that's class. Like. Yeah. But I like quad bikes, you know. Right. Because it's a more chunkier, I feel more... Yeah. I nearly killed myself in the Banshee. I think it's a Banshee, you call it? Fuck quad? Aye. Uh, yeah. Fucking big, high-powered fucking quad. Flew down the side of this fucking gilly pitch. Went to turn the corner. Was going too quick. Just went straight on ahead of the moon, went fucking flat, up in the air, right? So <laughs> I didn't want to tell anybody that I fell off a motorbike. So my mate was like, well, phone an ambulance. And I was like, no, get me in the car, bring me to the house and put me at the bottom of the stairs. I'm going to let on a fell down the stairs. <laughs> and the fucking ambulance <laughs> took me to the hospital and the doctor went, there's no way this happened falling down the stairs. <laughs> yeah. So he phoned the cops. To see if I'd been, a, if there'd been a car accident or anything they got, no one reported. <laughs> yeah. And the cops came in and breathlessed me and all, and I was going, "Listen, oh, I haven't been drinking," sake. and they were like, "Just tell us what happened." And I went, "All right, I fill off a quarter." <laughs> <laughs> and they were like, "Why didn't you just say it?" And I went, "I didn't want anybody to know." They're like, yeah. "For fuck's uh, sake, you that's... cause suspicion here, uh, do you know what every, I mean?" Literally every motorbike I've ever got on, I've wrecked it. Yeah. Never forget my mate bought one of them. Remember them wee Peugeot scramblers? Looked like a 206, but it was a scrambler. Yeah. Well, he had one of them, and he had let a couple of the lads drive it. No, then I was in the alleyway, and then um, a few of them had had a go, and I was just smoking, you know, and then he goes, do you want to go? And um, I wasn't a motorbiker, but I didn't want to... Say no. Yeah. yeah, so I was like, yeah, 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 no sweat. <laughs> You know, <laughs> smashed it into the wall, smashed it right just up. Too, just too powerful? Yeah, yeah just yeah. boom, wrecked yeah. it right, scraped the whole thing and all, yeah. smashed it to bits. It was this brand new scrambler. I was like, what's that cost you? Didn't cost me a penny, bro, obviously not. I don't know. I was mad back then, though. Wow. I was mad, bro. When I was a kid, people shit. always ask, like, if someone knew my dad, they would go, you know, when I was a teenager, like, I, I, if we went to a race, me and my dad, they'd be like, are you at the bike for you, man? I'd be like, I've a penny for them. <laughs> That's the closest I've got. Of a BMX. Yeah. yeah. Even and even that, like I watch my speed on it. Yeah. You know. Did you ever, when you had your bike, squash a plastic carton up and put it in the way? Cardboard. Obviously. Cardboard. Sound like a motorbike. Everyone Cardboard. I was unreal. Do you know what though? I've, I don't know why I'm thinking about this, but it was Christmas Eve. My dad. I was like 13, 12, even 12, about 12. I wanted a bike for Christmas. My dad was getting me a big new mountain bike. And my dad had one of them wee racer bikes, you know, the wee skinny yep, yep, wheels. Yep. It was Christmas Eve. My bike was coming the next day. I was excited. I thought I'll go down to the shop here and get something to eat. You know, some sweets or something. And I thought I'll take my dad's racer, racer. bike. Cycled down the street. Boom. Wrapped up. Don't know how I smashed into something. The whole, all of the... the, the Did you smoke back then, though? No? I started smoking weed when I was twelve, so oh, yeah. yeah, probably. I was, <laughs> that was probably where it started. You know, you know, you shouldn't. You know, you shouldn't do. Get on bikes. Get on a racing bike. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ooh, that motorbike, anything. Uh, I know. I, I am. Um, like, I, I do know a lot of friends who's died on bikes too. I wouldn't. I'm actually against bikes. Really, it's very dangerous. It's yeah. dangerous. You know well, I mean? it depends. A motorbike in this country is dangerous as fuck. Yeah. yeah my dad fell off. I'm not making this up. This week, my dad fell off his bike and nearly died. Yeah. Push bike this week. Yeah, and you know what? The, my dad's seventy two, right? He, he, I went. What speed were you doing? And he said, "I'll show you a photo, right?" Of it. He literally had to get stitched all over his body. Oh. I said, "What speed were you doing?" And he goes, "Here's the thing. Don't tell anybody this. I was stationary." He fell off the oh. bike stationary. He just couped on one side. Yeah, but that can sometimes be worse. Look at this shit. For fuck's sake, bro. Oh, that's terrible. Is I know. It, a I know. it is, it does look like a punishment. He sure he didn't get a punishment. <laughs> but he was lying. But he, he's trying to make you <laughs> not be worried about it. <laughs> Fucking didn't pay my dealer and he got me paid up. That's it, he's telling you. Well, I'll tell Shane. He's bike. like me, I land about <laughs> falling down the stairs. But he fell off, he fell off the bike. Body wrecked and uh, he's like cut down the side of his head. He goes, I, and there, I could have like there was rocks and I could have banged my head and died. And he goes, but it didn't. So that's why you don't need helmets. And I went, no, it it isn't. Yeah. You should wear a helmet. And he goes, yeah. but it didn't die. I was like, I it should definitely wear a helmet. Did he fall off stationary at the top of a mountain? Do you know what he did? <laughs> that was Steve Bannon. Do you know what he did? He was stopped and he went to put his right foot on like a rock. To, to let somebody past and down the other side so it was a path by the coast 
and then there's like a six foot drop down to the sand and some rocks. So he stopped and he's like obviously an old guy. And he fell down the foot. Now he put the wrong foot down. <gasps> so he put his left foot like no. <laughs> like a Looney Tunes character, he put his le- the wrong foot down and then just Rolled couldn't stop himself. He was thinking about the cha cha slave, wasn't yeah. it? Oh. Left foot bang. And just kite and bang. <laughs> yeah. Fuck's sake. Yeah. So um remember I, I was on your podcast there and we were talking about the, the blue t- lights yeah, yeah. yeah. Remember? So we need to hear what happened, lads. Remember? If you've got a part without us, Lads, we're this fuming. Is going to be I'm going to be serious with you, right? Is this it? Are you I'm telling actually, us we're all I'm going to announce it now. Listen, I'm glad that I got just back on before the actual day of filming. And because if you haven't got your parts yet, I'm going to be upset. Are you in it? No. no. Well, I went, check what happened. Remember the lovely lady I was uh-huh. talking about? Yeah. Uh-huh. Who was going to get my born in Belfast on uh-huh. there? I went and met her after a podcast. And I says, me says about getting born in Belfast. Then she goes, yeah, we've messaged and all they're on that. And then I says, here, say to the director, I don't just want my song in it. I want a part in it. Yeah. She messaged them. And then she looked at it and she said, I think they're going to give you a part. Fuck me. No, no, no. You... You, you meant to say we apart? Well, that's going to get us apart. We, we, we come up, as a package. We knew, but we knew what the part. We well, knew what. Oh, I'm sorry. Paddy, right. That's how Paddy <laughs> relaxed. Well, he's getting excited every time. Every no. time my mum enters tea, everywhere. Paddy just poured boiling. Paddy just poured fuck boiling water over you there. And that's how seriously we take yeah, our partnership for this blue lights. That was us warning you. I know. You're. Can I be honest? There'll be sugar in the next one. You're lucky he's in between us. I'm only joking. I'm only joking. I'm only joking. I'm only joking. But we come as a trio, we come as a package. Well, so I'm get gonna, us in. Well, listen, I'm going to. You're the Trojan this. horse, we're inside you. Well, listen, it gets better than that. What? <laughs> That's <laughs> what we're doing in Blue Lights. It's not a blue movie for fuck's sake. I'll talk to you then. Uh, we'll do the three and one. No, we'll get you then. But no, this is what I wanted to say. This is truthful now as well. And I'm, I don't know if you're going to be upset about this, but I'm doing a. a, a I've got a new song called Love Hate. Right. And I've got a few of the actors in it now, and we're making an actual cinema worthy movie for the music video right and we've got world class actors in it and everything and there's a producer and I said I'm friends with Shane Todd Mm -hmm. it would be good to have him in it yep do you know what the producer said to me (laughs) who's he what I can't tell you the name because Shane will be looking up he said I mean, if, I, if I'm looking at anyone, they won't give a fuck. <laughs> Shane Todd's looking at you. Or well, what's he gonna do? Aye, aye, but that's a, that's a that's a style. You can go on like the happy go lucky, but you could pay someone off to do it for you. You know what I mean? So go ahead, go ahead. Anyway, he said to me, doesn't want to get Shane because he's scared that it'll take away the seriousness of it. Shane, I didn't like it. You know what I think? I honestly think this. You know what you are. You are oh, underestimated at the minute. You're underestimated. Yes. And I see you as a Robin Williams. Yes. Adam Sandler. Yep. You're a, you're a comedian, and they think that's all. You're a one-trick pony. They don't know about MC Beezer. They don't know about... I know that you could do a serious a yep. serious policeman. Yep. Now, I don't want to give away too much, but basically the policeman gets killed in this. Like, but oh, who's this producer? I know, I, I'm going to introduce you to him if you want, because I didn't like it. I thought she is this could blue be legs? Sick. No, not no, blue legs. No, is this love this hate? Yeah. Yes. So saying love hate. Are you this. getting John Connors now? You know I'm getting John yes. in it. So I've actually sampled John at the start. After our last show, uh-huh. I binged watched Love Hate, watched all five well, seasons. Done. Messaged too. John and said to John, "Bro, you're my favorite character in the whole fucking thing, you know." And I felt like felt like you were me or something. I loved it, you know. And I said I'd love to get you on the podcast. So he he came on the podcast. Brilliant. Then I says I'm making this movie from a song called Love Hate. He said you're more than welcome to you know come down to the campsite and all, you know, um, shoot it and then. Um, We've got like Nidge's wife is gonna play my girlfriend and all in it. So we've got like a load of then we've got Ian Beatty, mm. you know from Ian's brilliant. Brilliant. I've been in He's gonna movie. be like the policeman trying to track me down and all. Really? Class. Yeah. Shane, brilliant. I want you in it. I'm gonna go against the producer get, and say get, fuck get, you. Shane's my mate and he's serious. Give me his. Get, Maybe if, if he, he had to say Paddy McDonald, then he would have went, nah, he's a fucking serious. Yes. Fucking. I want you both in it. I do. I do. Give me a serious thing. Give me some. Right, so you're um, you've just met me. I'm a pipe bomb maker. You wanna buy a you wanna buy a bomb off me? Well, first of all, go straight to the PSNI. <laughs> See, so you're a policeman, right? So you're gonna no, have to play great, a sorry, He does look like a policeman, Shane. So I come, he I does. come to your house, right? You, 
You making bombs? No, I'm not. What are you talking about? Huh? What? Who's making what? I just I thought it just you might be. I heard what? somebody what? Paddy McDonald was saying you were making. I'm no fucking toot. I'm no toot. I didn't toot, John. I didn't fucking toot. Right here, boys. Do you know what? My mistake. Fuck. All right, so just enjoy your day and enjoy your day. And you enjoy your day. Yeah. Appreciate it. God bless. All Cheers. Thank you. Definitely promise you're not. Say, I don't know. I think he's good. I'm I good. Think he's I'm good. good. I'm not saying he's made somebody. I don't know. I think he could. Where's he laughing? What's up, police? Because he can't believe it. <laughs> yeah. OJ. Okay. Listen, Relax. he's a policeman who's believable. He knows yeah, yeah, where he's yeah, got yeah, himself yeah. into. Yeah. He stood beside me in Big Patty and he's thinking, fuck, I've you crossed the line here. You careful our red hot box entertainment. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you. So, this love hate video. I'm gonna go against the producer and say, fuck yous, I'm the one paying. Yeah. I'm making the movie, it's my movie. And I think- Is it based in Belfast or Dublin? Both. I could be a black taxi man. Listen, I'm just gonna tell you- There's no makeup department, Paddy. No, I want you to be a black taxi man, yes. And you could be like part It's of a white taxi. You could be part of my crew. And could you get us a black taxi or not? Not a problem. You could be part of the crew and we actually, you get See, you- That's so how we, you're working in. So we'll meet it. So you should have said, I, I have, I, I can get a cop car. Yes. That's you should have said. Yep. And then you would have got in. Well, the producer I can get a got cop a car. car no, See, he's got all the locations right. and all. I have a drive, full clean driving license. Do you? So yeah. do I. <laughs> Listen, are you going to be in it? Yeah, both? no, 100%. Yeah. And I'm not joking about blue lights, like, I, I, I do want to see, I do want to... Oh, party. I wasn't joking about it either. Like. No, no, I'm you not joking about it. You seem to have got a wee bit further. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm going to... You need to bring us in. Yeah. Now would be the time. So you get in and then just go in and just put your foot down. Yeah. And say, listen. Yeah, well, listen. I, I, I can't promise you nothing for season two. No, 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 we're in it. You've, you've said we're in it. But so it should be good. Listen, see season three. Because by season <laughs> the end of season two. season yeah, two. Yeah, we want to be in season two. I guarantee you, if I get in season two, it'll be similar <laughs> to Love Hate, <laughs> where they introduced he's John Connor. The band. He's broke up the I band. already have. Listen, can you remember season two of Love Hate when they introduced John Connor? Yes. And he's only in it for a wee snick. Yeah. And then they thought, that guy's amazing. We need to make a whole series about him. Mm. That's what it's going to be with Blue Lights. Right. I'll probably be a cameo. And then they'll say, that guy's phenomenal. And then next <laughs> season three, I'll have more pull. Right. I'll say, I want Shane as a policeman. Yes. Paddy as my mate, the taxi man. And then whoever else. I think it would work. Right. Right. It'll work. And also, I think you should really, really do more um, Belfast Blues because they copied you and that is a fact and they do need to know that like you need to be careful saying that I'll say it all I want listen I'm already on the show they can't backtrack now <laughs> but I didn't hear anything Shane Todd inspired <laughs> Blue Lights it doesn't make sense it was the same font and everything they released theirs a few months before Blue Lights came out didn't few it? years Few four years, years ago, yeah. Four years ago. Come on. And it's actually the same font, Belfast Blues. You're Blue talking Lights. us all out of a role in the new series, no, Belfast no, Blues. I'm actually talking to you, Zane. I know. Because you are the founders of Blue Lights. Yes. So you, without you... <laughs> we, both, we both went... <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's it, lads. I'm excited. I've got big John Connors on board. Yes. He was an absolute legend of a fella when I met him, like, you know? Yep. Uh, He's a real deal, but that's what I... He's the about real deal. That's what I loved about Love Hate. Have yeah. you watched Ken? Oh, Ken. It's it only on because I, I have a chip box. Do you know what I mean? Oh, so shocker. I don't know. I don't <laughs> know. No one thought you had a, no, a standard box. Have so you I, watched it? I've watched it right up till season two, series eight, and then I can't find yeah, it anymore. It, that's all is there that is. It? Have you it. watched it? No. So go on, is it like a spin-off of Love Hate? No, you, you, I wish. Go on, It's Paddy. about the Kennens. It's like a drug family in Dublin. Oh, right. And then yeah. they, they, they fucking are running the drugs, but they're not the top fucking family. Right. Did you love it, Paddy? Oh, fucking brilliant. Well, what was I'm, it on, RT? Let me tell you, Shane. Yes, are you they don't get RT in Hollywood. Listen, listen to me. I don't know what Paddy's been watching, but I'll tell you this right now. It's no Love Hate. No, it's not as good as Love Hate. No, no I'll tell you this now. He said it's about, it's called Ken. It's about this Ken family. family. Well, that, loosely that, based. Well, no, they say no, that. It's, about it's them. called the, no, well, it's not. <laughs> because I'll tell you this. Hold on, Paddy. You're getting yourself in trouble here because <laughs> well, it's really not. No, well, I'll tell you this why it's not about them. They're called the Kinsellas. The main man in the family. <laughs> Paddy, uh, here, listen to this, Shane. Listen to this. I am. The main gangster in the Kinsellas is a homosexual and he goes on homosexual dating apps. Right? The boss of the Kinsella family is this girl. Who, who was just married in. Yeah, she's a married in, but she's the biggest, baddest, smartest gangster in the world. It's like the strong female character. You know what I mean? And like she, Michelle O'Neill. No lad can fuck with her. 
<laughs> naturally, yes, she is. So listen. So the main boss is is a homo. The the main boss, who's actually the real boss, is a woman. The two brothers are shagging the same girl. Which and, is the and, main boss. And they're okay. Which is the main boss, and they're okay about it. Literally every man in the in the series is either a homosexual or um, a simp. Or a spa, or like a retard doesn't know what's going on, and it's all the women. Every woman in it is the absolute dog's bollocks. You can't fuck with them. And then I said to my mate, "Oh, it's a bit ridiculous, isn't it?" And he goes, "Ah, oh, you don't want to watch season two then." Season two, big boss woman. What do I call her? The big bad boss. She goes to meet the other international crime family, and guess Love what? She's, she's a, a woman. she's the woman. So talking. all the bosses of the world are women. I'm thinking this is but some, the, this is some woke the have new to, age the fantasy have to, bullshit. They have to do that for TV now. Exactly. You see, love hate. There wasn't one homosexual storyline in it. There was no girl. And there should have been. What do you mean? There should have been. There shouldn't have been. I, I loved it. I loved Love Hate. Love Hate was perfect. So, they don't glorify snitching. You see, most uh, series is in nowadays now. Snitches are glorified to get away with it. Now the snitches get shot dead in yeah. Love Hate. I love Love Hate. No Spoiler one can alert. With it. And they wouldn't get away with Love Hate nowadays. Snitching means snitching. Yeah. That's why Ken, my dad. <laughs> yeah. Ken is terrible to me. I yeah. think it's just some. No, fucking, Love Hate's great. Love Hate's the G shit. And they couldn't do it now. That's the problem with it. There's too many agendas nowadays. We need a strong female character who is so much better than all the men. You with me? And she's you so much watch, smarter. See Disney? See if you go to watch some it. of the yeah. old fucking things. Yeah. Before it comes on, it goes, some of the parts in this might be may offend you a wee bit. Yeah. And you're like, the fuck are you talking about? It's Lady and the Tramp. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's exactly. Fuck. It's mad, bro. It's Lady and the Tramp, I think. What do you mean? What do you, we're going yeah. to get offended about? Yeah, it just fucking irritates me now, modern day cinema. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, see, and don't get it twisted. There's always been strong female characters. Yeah. For example, in Love Hate, you know, Nidge's wife. I thought she Great was character. phenomenal. Do you know why? She held her own. She didn't ask too many questions. She knew he was stressed. She chose to be his wife and she supported him. And she never snitched, never betrayed him. Absolute hero. You know what I mean? Then there was other women who were out scheming and using their... And it's real life. This is what women's powers are. They would scheme yeah. and be... They're not super... They use, they're not they use what up, they have, yeah. Yeah, they're not beating up all the fucking men and, like, out smart. Like, it doesn't work like that in no. reality. And no. Ken is some fanciful bullshit. Yeah. Not based on anyone. They thought they were smart using the word kin. You know, and they There's changed a, it to kinsula. Yeah. Where but, I come from, there was a saying. Bucked or be bucked. <laughs> Yeah, it's true. Do you know what's good? Below Deck. You ever seen that on Netflix? No. Is that a bit Imagine dangerous? working on. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You work on a private yacht, and I tell you the shenanigans that goes on. Yeah. You do not want to know. Can imagine. You know, um, in London, the word <laughs> "bucked." Hold on. Do you know the word "bucked" in London? Because OJ said to me the other night, "Ah." Oh, did you know this girl? I went, yeah. And he goes, yeah, I bucked her the other night. Oh, Jay. And then that's what I said. I went, go on, lad, you bucked her. Yeah. And then he went, oh, no, no, no. I meant, um, I meant uh, I linked her. And it was the same. Meant he this, what? Uh, like, met up with her. Same with this other. Listen to this. There was a famous rapper from Manchester, and I was messaging him. I've done a song with him. He's got his eyes shot out. I've done a song with him called No Blacks, No Irish. And he says, no blacks, no Irish. I took a bullet through my iris. Now I'm missing lashes from my eyelids. That's his lyrics in it. Like, he's a cool guy. But I imagine him, says, I want you on the podcast. And he goes, yeah, man, I'll give you a shout when I'm over and I'll give you a buck. Right now, he goes, I'll buck you. You're well, going, nice. are you not going to part and stop in Kenya, can't you? <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, I'm not in the ground of your county. This so. guy actually acted in Top Boy too, the guy I'm talking about. You know I love Top Boy. Well, you know the guy with one eye in Top Boy? Yeah. Remember the Scouser's mate from yeah. Manchester? That's my boy. He's scary as fuck. Yeah, that's your boy. What do you mean? That's true, I'm not. <laughs> that's Manchester <laughs> slang. <laughs> not my <He's> boyfriend. <laughs> Yeah, Trigger is called, he's a G. But um, it's funny that, isn't it? Because we say buck as in you're getting uh, bucked. You know, but uh, is that what you mean, OJ? When you say buck, it means go and check someone. He's going to come and buck you, isn't it? <laughs> but I mean, even that, you think buck you like you're going to get bucked, even buck, buck, buck. You know what I mean? I buck you up, boy. Yeah, you're going to get bucked, you. <laughs> say in Belfast, OJ, don't say no more. I'm going to buck, I'm going to go and buck you. Yeah, it doesn't go well. It means a different thing over here. It's the same with Heather. 
See in, see in Manchester, yeah. see if you said you're a header. Do you know what that means? You suck dick. You suck dick. Yeah. And then it was crazy. It means the same thing here, Listen, too. I, uh, I, I, a few girls. <laughs> I'm crazy as a header, will it? <laughs> a, few girl, a few girls came over, right? The, I think it was my cousin and her friends, and my mates were all out in Manchester having a smoke, and the girls were all laughing, and then they looked at her, and one of the girls went, She's a header. Ignore her, she's a header. And then all my mates were like, Yo! What's she saying? They, they were OJ like, loving it. Yeah, like, What's she saying? Get a butt. <laughs> she's a header, yeah. Drinking OJ juice tonight. I'm telling you. <laughs> so, listen, lads, I'm going to get you a part in my movie. This, uh, this, uh, and blue lights, yeah. And uh, uh, blue lights, no, no, you said. I, I really you want said. you some blue lights. I don't see why not. It's ridiculous. That promised me the thing he did say. Yeah. And um, I need your help, fellas. Did you sell out the arena on your own, Paddy? Mm -hmm. Woo! Did you actually? Didn't it, yeah. Yeah, I don't deserve an applause. <laughs> but Shane, you sold it out a few times. <laughs> You, you're, you're acting all, like, <laughs> acting all just like humble now. You sold it out a few times, though, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. So this is amazing, boys. Talk to me, like, how's this going? How did this happen, Paddy? Because that's special, like, like you said, you were a taxi man. And... I don't know. It, it's it's strange because people were going, like, uh, you just came from nowhere. But it didn't. I've been doing this fucking 12 years. And when COVID hit, I've been doing it 10 years. Right. And... And what, like, comedian stand yeah, yeah. and stand up comedian? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I only done it because it was in depression. So I started doing it and then it was like drugs, I was hooked. A lot of boys said hooked. that, that's what Will William says too, so doesn't he? It's it? just like fucking and she put me up for it because it just changed who it was and whatever and then I started doing stand up and I met all these guys and fucking we were just gigging and we didn't really have a scene here. Yeah, we no. didn't have a scene like we we just no, had gigs. Come and go, we come, yeah, there was like a gig set up here, gig and we were all gigging like fuck and then I went after about six, seven years, went to London. I was working over there, but it was gigging. And every night I would do a different 20 minutes because the same people were there and they were like, how much material do you have? And I was like, what do you mean? And they were like, I only have 20 minutes. And I was going, how long are you doing it? And they're going 10 years. And I'm going, what do you mean? Because they do 20 minutes. They do five minute spots. They do, like, and that just is for, for years, for years. And you're for going, years. what Whoa. the fuck? So I was like, fuck that. And then came home and COVID hit. And she had asked me to do a podcast. And I'd done the podcast and spoke about my uh, stag Had you thing. done a podcast up to that point? Mm, was that your first one? That was my first one. And he was like, why don't you talk about the stuff that you don't talk about on stage? And, and then we'd done that and I just went through the roof and then fucking done another podcast and went through the roof and then COVID hit and just people... And like I went back to doing the door, I was doing the door in the spa. I remember you saying that. And then that the video was out and fucking people were like, oh, it's Paddy McDonald. And so that went viral and then all the videos then started getting hits. And then when we came out of the other end of COVID, um, people were like, I want to see him live. And booked the Ulster Hall. No, booked the limelight. And it's sold it out like seven times. And then this is what we'll the Ulster Hall. And then from the Ulster Hall, we went to the waterfront. And from the waterfront, we went to the SSC. Nah, that's, user, that's phenomenal. But like, that is a real, real special shit. Because yeah. the only th guys from Belfast who I would have thought could sell out the arena are boxers. Mm -hmm. Literally, do you know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. Michael Conlon and all, do you know what I mean? But yeah. just a stand up show. Yeah, it was just when you came out, I think when COVID hit, people were like, do you know what? Fuck this, like being trapped in the house. And yeah. I'm going to go out and fucking, I'm going to fucking go to shows and I'm going to. And I think people seen with the comedians here in, in Belfast and fucking the north and they were just like, do you know what? These guys are as good. I'm paying 40 quid to go and see John Bishop or Cabin Bridges or whatever. These guys are just as good. And I don't know. I actually think these are better because what it is is, again, there's like, see, when I moved to England, we didn't find English jokes funny. Mm. A lot of them too, and the humour was different. Like, you know what I mean? So see here in like all the Northern Ireland humour, and there's loads of different forms of it. Even the Southern humour as well. There's a comedian I laugh my bollocks off at. It's like some fella from Mayo. And he keeps talking, does me funny videos and all. You know, I forget his name, but he's uh -huh. hilarious. But there's all different types of wee comedians yeah, yeah. from well, Ireland. Comedy, comedy's like, it's like food. You learn like it or you don't. Do you know yeah. what I mean? So it's good that there's variety here because everybody has a wee bit... But they also do a lot of crossover too, do you know what yeah, I mean? Course, Everyone seems love. to have the hardcore fans, but then a lot of people go to the different ones, you know? Yeah, man, that's what I love about the, the comedy community here. You all seem very, like... Um, no, it, it all works together. Yeah, and stuff it all like works that. together. Yeah, yeah. 
Like, know. is it like that in the rap scene, or is it? It's uh, that's like, it's funny because it is. Is actually, it cutthroat? It is very like opposite, and it's like bitchy, you see. But the you comedy, I mean? the comedy it, scene was like that at one stage, and I think what I, I don't think people set out to do yet. Yeah. I think what people yeah. think is. Fuck! There can only be one. Uh, exactly. So I That's can't exactly. give him a gig, or I can't. Exactly, because he'll steal the shit. Lime but it's not. Shit. Yes, it, of it's, course. It's like if you do it as a, if there's a scene. Yeah. Then you could have a girl and a fella that are together, and you may be their favorite rapper, or fucking somebody else may be their favorite, but they'll go together to both yes, gigs. Exactly. So yeah. it's not. It you need yeah. to create a scene, and then so it ca- fucking flourishes. So there can't be one person doing well without there being a scene. Exactly. No. So if you want to do yes. well, you need to also yeah. help. The scene in whatever way 100%. you can. Well, so uh, no, I love it. Like last last night, I uh, had nothing planned. I was gonna have a night in, and I doing this for you know kids and all. I appreciate a night in, and then I went. I'm just gonna do pavilion. So there's an open mic in the pavilion, the Omo Road. Seven minutes. It's unpaid. It's an hour and forty five both ways drive for me, but I just wanted to try out a couple of jokes. Yes. And and when you do that. It's not like a, that's not a selfless, you're not being like, well, people might see me doing that or Patty doing that and the, or any any of the established acts and go, oh, maybe we'll go check out this night. I'm getting something out of it too because I'm practicing my jokes and that kind of thing, but you need to like keep doing that and meeting new comedians that are coming up and, and just get involved in, in a scene and support it. You can't yeah. just, you can't just do all the big shows and, and, yeah. and not, be at the grassroots of it as well because that's the most fun bit of it is, is it laveries is. and it's it's yeah, all that and obviously and the, you know what you find as well if you see if you did stop doing that you won't be as funny anyway no no mm. no, no, no no because you become less real yeah oh i yeah, 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 yeah so yeah. you have to just no, be there no, in yeah, with the you have to keep it real at, at the end of the day yeah. that's just the way it is never forget where you come from never forget what you are because yeah. that's what made you who you are 100 percent. so hollywood and the, sexy you're damn right <laughs> what'd you say hollywood and sexy hollywood and sexy mm. Is where that? I'm from and what I am. Oh, right, okay. Sorry. Here, you know who one of my favourite comedians is? Uh-huh. I actually, I, I probably would say he's my favourite. Stop. <laughs> so, you'll be, I think you'll be surprised, though. He's from the UK, like, he's from Scotland. Right. Do you know? Billy Conn? Nope. Frankie Boyle? Nope. I don't like him. Danny Boyle? Too many, like, pedo jokes now, Frankie Boyle. I don't like him. Do you know who, you know who it is? Lemmy. Oh, Lemmy's great. Yeah, yeah. Lemmy's, Lemmy's the best. He sets a tone for like yeah. anyone making online sketches and things like that. Lemmy yeah. is the That's greatest. The top. His sketches are the best too. Some of his sketches. I oh, but could he do seven million? Seven minutes of the pavilion. That's what I mean. Seven million. I did. I did the pavilion. The seven, seven million people, people last night. Was wild. Did you, bro? No. <laughs> there was about <laughs> seven. Seven. <laughs> seven. seven. No, no. There's about. Do you know Lemmy? Have you ever met Lemmy? No. I've never met him, no. He's not like because he's not a comedian. stand-up comedian. He he's not on the scene. No. He did do like. Lim- the, he did do like a live Lemmy show and yeah that. and he'll, he'll do like readings of his book and it's don't get me wrong it's the same laughs as you would get in stand up he's that good but as far as I know he doesn't do out and out stand up mm. he's not like on the scene doing circuit gigs Yeah, he makes his online content his TV show uh, does a Twitch stream but then yeah he does a live tour and I haven't be I will I would go to one of those apparently yeah. they're great but I've seen him do like readings of his book and just chatting to the audience, you're like, if he wanted to do, yeah, out and out stand up, yeah, he would like, be, he, he, he would easily it's, be able to do it. Have you seen much of the Lemmy show? Mm. He like it's something you have to be at a. I've showed some people it, and they look at me like, oh I'm yeah, yeah, up. but that's, and that's like, it doesn't calmly. register. Yeah. Same yeah. with the office. Even, you look at the office. Yeah, some people will be like, what am I watching here? Yeah, yeah. It's slow. It's yeah. It it looks too real. It's like what, a documentary about an office place. Yeah. It's all slow. Hum- it's uh, the, the best the ever. The thing I love about Lemmy is it's one the, the Scottish accent the way he does it, like you know, and it's like so. I don't know, I find it the funniest in the world. Yeah. And then it's like you have to have been in a really dark place to think like that. To yeah, yeah, not yeah. just to think it, to even relate and understand but I, it. I think he has. He's, he he's came he has. from the fucking... Yeah. You know, you have to be at your lowest to know what yeah. you ask. Or be, See, you know? this is the other... Th- remember I was talking to you the last time you we were on the podcast, I said my type of comedy as well as like social commentary yeah. where it's actually... It's quite shocking. It's that funny, like Bill Hicks and stuff, remember mm-hmm. all that? Well, I always felt Lemmy sort of done that but in a more subtle way yes, so yes, it would yes. show you the darkness of society and how dark people feel and go even your wee man you know your wee man who just sits in the house yeah, and, yeah. and it's so funny but it's also 
message really, he's telling the story yeah, it's about also what really disturbing because it might be funny us from the outside watching it but there is people in their own wee worlds suffering suffering yeah. like that you know he's yeah, very yeah. deep you know oh, wow. even like um did you see his clairvoyant one the bit the, 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 but here's this the genius of it he has a ring on his pinky finger I think yeah and he'll always just do this and yeah. like I don't as a comedy performer somebody who writes yeah it's the idea of just adding that wee bit into it of makes it so much funnier, those yeah, wee yeah. things. Yeah. There's always Raymond Day, things. that's his name, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, the, the yeah, it is one. Raymond Day, yeah. I've seen your um, Pablo Nutini. Yeah. That's a brilliant one that you do. If you that's need, you could perfect. literally say John Zoo featuring Pablo Nutini. I, I do the vocals. So. Have you seen his Pablo Nutini? He's good, isn't he? You actually really sound like him. Yeah. <laughs> you do. It's a gift. Have you seen his Pablo? <laughs> Everyone's seen it too many times. Special. Why did, was that years ago? Yeah. Ah, so uh, Anytime he's doing a gig in Belfast, I'd put that up. Sick. And he, he's seen it and liked it. Has he liked yeah, it, yeah, actually? Yeah. Well, yeah. He doesn't like it, he told me. He <laughs> yeah. So are you going to do any rapping party? Because obviously Shane is actually a, a brilliant rapper. Great MC. I wanted you to do, do a guest spot at the Bugsy Malone show. Yeah. I don't know if the audience would love that. The shit. closest Me? I done till it was I done the spade lift. Spade lift. That's probably the closest till it. I'll send you that video and you can see that. Definitely. So. And what's your podcast? I've been done yours, Mud didn't I? Mud blood. Yeah. And why? Why did you call it mud blood? Because well, he's a prod and I'm a Catholic. Love that. So, so a you're a what? <laughs> Catholic. I with thought a K, I you with a K. <laughs> with a K. I like that. Would it be a gag if I came out in like five years and was really from the shangle? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like Sunday Paddy. life. So Same called Paddy. Exposed. So yeah. the um the Sammy Baxter. The Bugsy Malone show that we're doing. <laughs> Um, that's all my mates from down south, you know, the Cali, yep. you know, who are setting it up. And they said to me, so who should we get from Belfast, you know, to support as well? And I said, get young Spencer. Yep. And they were like, what? No, you know, because they're all like yeah. Republicans. I says, no, he's not like that. You said, actually like him. But it, 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 see, this is the thing. You, you'd have fans all over. See, it's the same with kneecap, would have yeah, fans exactly. all communities. But see the whole thing about like young Spencer and stuff like He's rapping about where he's from and what. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. But, but if he was rapping about the IRA, exactly, it'd be and it wouldn't like, be. What, what are you talking about? Because exactly. you're from the Shankly. Yeah. Weird. And the funny thing is, they met him. They had these preconceived ideas. They end up fucking. They love him. Yeah. They ended up saying, "You're getting on the Dublin show too." Yeah. Class. Spencer's and going yeah, down to it. Dublin, right? Like that's funny. Class. But it's but it's break down barriers. Hundred percent. And I know more so than anything else. Exactly. And I know young Spencer's fans as well. I'd be thinking, what? What's what, 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 he doing? Like he met up with Dean McGovo. He's McGregor's mate, and they're they're writing songs together and all that. And a Dublin and Belfast connection. Now, but if they if you if know? you say his fans or what? If they're if they have a problem with that, then they're not fans. Exactly. They're not fans. Of course, and not only that. Even if they are, they're just mis they're they're misguided. Yeah, they might yeah. be fans and just think, huh? I thought this, I thought you, it was us and them. But when the same, he said, no, it's not. Everyone's yeah. together. Like it, it breaks yeah. down yeah. barriers. But you know? plus, he'd be able to rap about that experience. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like going down to Dublin and doing a gig and then young fans would be going, fuck. And then his songs will reflect yeah. that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I know people will be laughing because, like they said, the, They'll see young Spencer on the Cali Cave show, then I'm on the, the kneecap the show at the falls. That'll you be know great. what I mean? Unreal. That'll be good. They're going to be good, like, definitely. Listen, boys, we Thank could talk all much. day. I have yeah. to get you on as well, Paddy. Yes. We'll, I no, want to hear no. about your past. And yeah, yeah, and 100%. These are legends. Keep it up, my Cheers for having us on, as always. You're more than welcome. Thank you. Everyone, God bless. Cheers. What's happening? This, this, this is John Sue. Just slammer. <laughs>